Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. So, today's video, I am answering all of your relaxed hair questions. A month ago, I put out a call on my YouTube community feed to send me all of your relaxed hair questions, and I got a ton of great ones. Before I get into this video, before I start answering all of these great questions, please remember to subscribe to my channel and tap that little bell next to the subscribe button so that you do not miss any of my content here. On top of that, I started the Style Domination Relaxed Hair Care Society. It's a Facebook group and it is growing exponentially. I am thrilled with that. The community that I've built on Facebook is a super supportive one. The ladies are really, really helpful. Um, it's a great place for you guys to drop your relaxed hair questions and have the community answer them for you. So I encourage you to join. I will leave the link for you guys to click and join if you like. I would love that. All right. Question number one, and this is a goodie. Excuse me. I just celebrated my 43rd birthday, and for my birthday, God gave me the gift of declining eyesight. <laughs> so I will be wearing my glasses because girl cannot read nothing without them. All right, so let's see here. This question's from Sharon Raquel, and I love it. Okay. Here's a sensitive but real question. Surprise no one here has asked this yet. You talk about how to maintain healthy, relaxed hair even when you work out regularly, which is obvious that you do. Thanks, guys. However, nobody is talking about maintaining healthy, relaxed hair when you have an amorous partner and things get a little energetic. Oh my. What tips can you give to protect your hair from a love from love fest damage? Not trying to buy a satin bonnet to match a sex, sexy negligee. That's hilarious. By the way, you look incredible. Aw, Sharon, thank you. That is a fantastic question. And I'm going to be totally honest here. Um, when Ryan and I make the magic happen, I just get comfortable and let it happen. You know, like... The last thing that I am thinking about when we are getting amorous with each other is, oh my God, I should go protect my hair. You gotta live a little. Just, you know, do what you can and enjoy it. I think it's really, really sexy if you have long, gorgeous hair and it's swishing about in bed. I mean, you gotta roll with that. If you're really, really concerned about hair damage from, I guess, the friction of a roll in the hay, I would suggest getting satin pillowcases and satin sheets. So when your lover is throwing you around the bed, there is less friction caused from rubbing your hair up against cotton sheets, for example. If you're really worried about, you know, sweat ruining your hair or friction damaging your hair, put your hair in a sexy chignon or bun or whatever. But honestly, that is my advice. What is the point of growing all of this long, healthy hair if you can't enjoy it? If you can't whip your partner in the face with it? Alrighty, question number two comes from Nicole Scott. Have you ever colored your relaxed hair? If so, how did you take care of it? I have never had to color my hair. The grays are coming in fast and furious, and when I go to my stylist, Gloria, I do say to her, okay, when can we color my hair and she's always <laughs> pretty against it. She doesn't think it's time to do so yet. She does recommend though, if you have relaxed hair and you want to change the color or cover up grays, you do a semi-permanent rinse. Semi-permanent rinses are a whole lot less damaging to hair and they do not require you bleaching your hair in order to put the desired color back in. That is essentially how hair color works. You have to bleach the existing color out of your hair and then put back in the desired color. Obviously, bleaching is super harsh. It's a super harsh chemical process. And when you layer that on top of when you layer that on top of relaxed hair, you get damaged hair. So, I wouldn't recommend getting a permanent hair color with relaxed hair. You gotta choose either or. Okay, so the next question, what are some of your favorite relaxed hair products? So I really, really love Cara Care by Avalon, Avalon. So I'm gonna run through my current favorite hair care products right now, and a lot of these I've been using for about the past year. So I've got Cara Care's Hydrating Detangling Shampoo. I love this shampoo because after I use it, like 
It's so moisturizing and hydrating. It feels like I don't need to use a conditioner, but I do. And then I've been using the Aussie Three Minute Miracle. I love this stuff. It is protein free, does a great job at hydrating hair. It's thick and rich. It's not a, as good a detangler as the Joyco Moisture Recovery products, but Again, it's protein free and I feel like I had protein overload so I've been using as many protein free products as possible with the exception of the Joyco Color Therapy, um, Joyco K-Pack Color Therapy Luster Lock Treatment. This is a protein treatment. It is so incredible. I don't even know what they put in this stuff to make your hair so soft and manageable. Um, when my hair is feeling a little dry or I feel like my hair needs a little TLC, I will put this on, you leave it on for three to five minutes, I'll leave it on for 10, wash it out, boom, new hair. When I do a deep conditioning treatment with oils, I will use Creole Essences Haitian Black Castor Oil. I will mix this into any heavy deep conditioner, heat it up slightly in the microwave or in a, uh, using a double boiler and apply it to my hair and I absolutely love this. Black owned business by the way. After rinsing conditioner out of my hair and I'm getting ready to style it, I use Caracare's Detangling Conditioning Mist. It's a really nice detangler. For overnight treatments, I use Kitastase's Discipline Oleo Relax Oil. I adore this stuff. I'm on my second bottle. It just, it's so effective. If your hair is feeling a little dry or a little lackluster, just add a pump or two to your hair and the following morning, your hair is like rejuvenated. And lastly, I was at Sephora and I picked up this Gizu hair oil and it has been fantastic. So Gizu is run by this mega influencer, Negan Mersalehi. Her father is an apiarist, I believe, like a beekeeper. So it's honey infused hair oil and I'm a little stunned. Like I thought, forgive me, this was like a white girl hair product, but it works really well on all sorts of hair. Um, just a little disclaimer, something I'd recommend. Um, do not use oils on your hair and then use heat tools like flat irons or curling irons. It's like uh, frying your hair, but love it. It smells really nice too. Okay, next question. Do you personally think that your hair grows faster, retains length better, less breakage when it is relaxed in comparison to when you have been natural? Um, okay, so I've never, like the last time I had natural hair was when I was 14 and I was retaining tons of hair. So my hair was quite long, a little bit longer than it is now. And I had my wonderful mother taking care of my hair. So yeah, it was thriving, it was doing really well, but I don't have any experience with natural hair since then. Um, I think that and I, I'm, I'm just speculating here that if you have natural hair and you take really, really good care of it, it might be easier to retain length because your hair is just that much stronger. I firmly believe, obviously, I feel I'm living proof of this, that there is such thing, obviously, as healthy, relaxed hair. And you most certainly will grow your hair and retain length if you take care of it. So you got to deep condition. You got to get regular trims. You have to use good quality hair care products. You have to wrap your hair at night. All of those things, like, I don't care what anybody says. My experience is that relaxed hair is fragile and it, it requires a lot of care. The last time I mentioned that in a YouTube video, the naturalistas really came after me. But that has been my experience. I think if you're taking really good care of it and you know what you're doing, it is easier to take care of than natural hair. Uh, a lot of my friends, including my sister, who's a naturalista, says it's a lot of work, especially if you have a ton of gorgeous, thick, kinky, curly natural hair. So that's my two cents. But again, I'll preface all of that by saying that I haven't had natural hair in 100 million years. Next question. This is from Claudia D. How do you successfully air dry your hair? I'm also relaxed and no matter how much moisture I add to my hair when I air dry it, it is so dry and causes breakage. By the way, I have low porosity hair. Okay, so this is how I air dry my hair. I wash my hair, I use super deep conditioning products, and then I get out of the shower and I'll use a big, one of my husband's old t-shirts to squeeze out the excess water from my hair. And then I will add 
my Cara Care Detangling Conditioning Mist and maybe a little moisturizer on the ends of my hair. And then I detangle carefully with a wide tooth comb and then I leave it. Now Gloria, my hairstylist, she relaxes my hair pretty stick straight. So I think that is pretty conducive to air, like air drying my hair pretty sleek and smooth. As I'm air drying, I will periodically run my fingers through it to get any knots or tangles out, but generally there aren't too many. And that is all I do. I don't do too much to my air dried hair. Maybe I'm just lucky. Maybe it's just my hair type. I'm not quite sure, but that's just been my experience with air drying my hair. If I need to go somewhere and it's taking too long, I will take my Dyson air dryer or my T3 Micro and, you know, just put it on cool and blow dry my hair gently. But that is it. I, I don't do too much to my hair. If, my, if I've got a lot of uh, new growth, I will tie like a headband around my hairline to keep it uh, sleek and smooth. But that's basically it. I don't do too much to my hair um, when I leave it air dried. Therefore, like I don't flat iron it. At night, I will put it into twists or uh, wrap it with a silk scarf and that keeps the frizziness away. Claudia, you're right. I do notice that when I air dry my hair and leave it like that for let's say a week, I can't even get through a whole week by the third day or so it starts to feel dry and a little crunchy and then I get stressed out and I start moisturizing and sealing and throw it up into a bun. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any great air drying tips to achieve sleek, smooth hair, we'd love to hear them. Please share in the comments. Okay, so next question is from Pink Light. Products that you stay away from, that's a great question. Also, moisturizing your hair throughout the week, how? All right, products I stay away from. I stay away from a lot of products with protein in them. This is a long-standing debate in my hair care group on Facebook. You know, you have your die-hard protein lovers and people like me who sort of stay away from them. So yeah, I found that maybe about a year ago or so, my hair was really failing and I was looking at my, my hair care, I was looking at the ingredients and everything had protein in it. And when I did some research, I determined that I had protein overload and when I cut all of them out, my hair bounced back. So those are the products I stay away from. There are some heat tools that I stay away from and you guys are gonna laugh and or hate me. I don't know if you guys remember this, but about three years ago, I did a hair care review, a hair tool review here on YouTube on the Con Air. It was like this weird thing that you put, like it sucks up your hair and curls it. Yeah, that that I would stay away from. I'm so sorry. Like it achieved, like I achieved really great curls with it, but it also sort of tangled my hair. You have to be really, really careful with that. <laughs> I stay away from that. The other products that I stay away from are super heavy, thick products with the exception of my Blue Magic hair grease. I do like that for my scalp, but you'll see a lot of texturizers, a lot of hair waxes that are like one step below candle wax. They are so thick, goopy, and heavy. They make my hair chunky and nasty. Uh, I don't have the hair type for them, nor do I do any hairstyles that require them, so I stay, stay away from that. I also, stay away, I also stay away from edge control products. I find a lot of them are loaded with alcohol, therefore they're drying, and I feel that when you're using edge control products every single day, you're not doing your edges any good. Like you're doing a disservice to your edges. It dries them out. The constant manipulation of them will break your hair along the hairline. And frankly, I don't like that really sort of heavy, shiny, greasy look at the hairline. Uh, it's, it's not for me. Uh, I, I've seen beautiful baby hair looks on Instagram and YouTube. More power to you, that's for you. Uh, the main reason I stay away from edge control products as well is they make me break out. So no, 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 no. Oh, I also stay away from a lot of hairsprays. There's only a couple of hairsprays that I really, really like, but for the most part, they just make my hair really hard and tangled therefore leading to breakage. A lot of them are loaded with alcohol, which is very drying and they make your hair look dull. I really love Elnet. Oribe has a fantastic hairspray. 
yeah. All right, next question. How often do you relax your hair and how do you stay consistent with taking care of it? This is from Sarah, Sarah Soda. <laughs> so I relax my hair every, geez, uh, two and a half to three months. That schedule works really, really well for me. Sorry, I've got schmutz on my glasses here. I feel that if I stretch beyond that, my hair really starts to suffer and then the new growth is really, really hard to manage and I am not about that detangling life. <laughs> and when I stick to a two and a half to three month schedule, I don't see any breakage, my hair thrives, it stays shiny, and I retain length. My maintenance schedule basically is washing my hair weekly, deep conditioning weekly. Something that I started doing this year regularly was adding heat to my deep conditioning routine, so I got a heat cap. So every time I condition my hair, I will put the heat cap on for 20 minutes and it is cut down on my deep conditioning time and I feel that it has boosted the hydration of my hair. That's been key. When I wash and go and put my hair in a bun, I moisturize and seal my hair every night. That's been a game changer. I also deep condition my hair in sections. That's been another game changer for me. It's been really, really fantastic because I no longer miss any sections of my hair. It forces me to add conditioner also to the places that need it. So that's been really, really great. The last maintenance thing that I do without fail that I never miss is I get my hair trimmed every single time I relax my hair. That's been a fantastic trim schedule for me. Isabella Maxwell is asking, how do you grow and retain length in relaxed hair without having a protective style? Well, what works for me is I usually have my hair in a protective style. My hair is always up off my shoulders. It's always um, up in a bun. I'm really, really careful to do whatever I can to keep my, my hair on my head and my ends protected. The ends are the oldest part of your hair and if you wanna retain length, you really need to baby those. So I always have my ends tucked in. When I, like it gets, where I live in Ottawa here in Canada, it is crazy cold and I really truly believe that cold weather is not good for relaxed hair. So I always wear a hat and again, always protect my ends from the cold. For retaining length, what's really, really worked for me is moisturizing and sealing, deep, and deep conditioning my hair and really treating my hair like a baby <laughs> honestly it's relaxed hair is a bit more fragile than natural hair so you really you, you need to do whatever you can to to protect it and if you want to grow your hair babying the ends is key another thing that i do that i feel really helps is taking care of my hair from the inside out so drinking a lot of water taking hair supplements eating really well and then other things I do are stimulating my scalp with like a scalp massager to increase blood circulation to the hair follicles so that I am growing good quality hair from the roots. All right, so Kem Sparkle is asking, what is your favorite relaxer, leave-in, and why? So my favorite relaxer is Silk Elements with Argan Oil. It's a lye relaxer and it, I use regular strength. So Glor that's the relaxer that Gloria uh, uses on me and it works very, very well with my hair. My favorite leave-in conditioner at the moment is the Cara Care Detangling Conditioning Mist. I also use one uh, by Kerastase and Oribe. I have an Oribe, like a luxury hair care video coming up, so I won't go too much into detail with those two brands. Okay, so next question's from Deli Hart. Which deep conditioner is better, Cara Care or Redken and why? So right now my hair is loving Cara Care, and the Cara Care conditioner that really works for me is the moisturizing conditioner for color treated hair that seems to work better for me than the Humecto. And I prefer the Cara Care personally because it is protein free and uh, it's really, really done wonders for my hair. I love the Redken Anti-Frizz Deep Conditioner. I think it's great. Uh, I would recommend it. If your hair needs some protein, needs that boost, it's a great one. It's really, really good also for sleek, beautiful, shiny hair. So it's like comparing apples and oranges. One is good for one particular reason for me, hydrating and no protein. And then the other one is great for if you have damaged hair and you wanna rebuild 
the hair, proteins necessary for that. I still do protein treatments, like once a month, or usually once um, after I relax my hair. So I, I think they're key, I think they're important. So, you know, it really depends on what your hair needs. So Blue is asking, do natural hair care like Ayurvedic powders, etc., work on relaxed hair? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't I don't even know what those are. I'm sorry. I yeah, I don't know. Ashley Nicole is asking, how long do you stretch between touch-ups? How do you style your hair while managing new growth? So uh, the longest I've ever stretched was four months, and that was really, really tough. That was at the beginning of COVID during the uh, like the first quarantine lockdown, and I found it pretty easy to do, but I was really, really diligent about... Sorry, I'm feeling this side part. <laughs> I was really, really diligent about moisturizing and sealing my hair using the most hydrating, detangling, and moisturizing products I could find, and really staying on top of keeping my hair tangle free. What I did was I would wash my hair, use super deep conditioning, like thick rich products, use heat to really infuse the deep conditioner into my strands. And then I would comb out my damp hair really carefully and slowly. I'd take my time and throw it up into a bun. That really worked for me. <clears throat> but I should preface all of that by saying that I don't stretch. I like I I don't do extended stretches. The longest I'll do is three months because my I find my hair does not do well with stretching. Yeah, how do you style your hair while ma managing new growth? Buns. I'm not I'm not too. Uh, what's what's the word? Like I don't experiment too much with my hair or hairstyles, for that matter. Deli Hart again asks, best products to use in winter? I, I wouldn't say there's a particular line that's better to use over other lines, but try to use the most thick, rich, hydrating products you can, because with the combination of the cold temperatures outside and indoor heating, your hair can dry out really fast. Okay, so Camille is asking two questions. After doing a relaxer, do you notice that hair didn't quite take? What to do? And number two, I sweat a lot during workouts. How do I go back to straight hairstyle without frying my hair every day? Help. <laughs> Aw. So Camille, if you have relaxed your hair, especially at home, and you notice that places don't quite take, which is under processing, I would wait six to eight weeks, preferably eight weeks, before having the under process parts corrected and fixing that is not easy to do on your own so I suffered with this uh, like many years ago and I went and saw my hairstylist Gloria and what she did was I needed a, my roots touched up with a relaxer and one side of my hair was under process and the other side wasn't and that was due to the fact that my mother was relaxing my hair at home and she'd always start on this side and by the time she got to the other side, my hair was burning so bad that I'd be crying, bawling, begging her to wash it out. So this side would never get the same amount of processing time as the other side. What Gloria did to fix that was pull the relaxer through only this side of my hair. But it's really, really hard to do. You can quickly, easily, overprocess your hair. So I would leave that to a professional. But yeah, wait eight weeks and get the uh, under-processed parts re-relaxed. And then secondly, straight hairstyles after working out. So what I do is I, I twist up my hair, like just one big twist, like a giant chignon, like put it in a bun. But I don't put like a thick, hard, elastic band in because that'll cause a kink. So I'll usually, usually clip it up with a claw, like a claw hair clip, and put a headband around my hairline to keep my new growth from frizzing out. And I'll keep that headband on until my hair is dry. And then when my hair is dry, like the sweat has dried up, then I'll take it off and I find that really works well for keeping my hair straight. I never ever use the flat iron in between flat iron jobs, you know what I mean? So if I wash my hair and flat iron it, that's the only time I will flat iron because it's just too damaging. A really great option is a L'Oreal Steam Pod. I just did a Steam Pod tutorial on my Instagram 
and it uses steam to flat iron your hair so it's a whole lot less damaging than traditional flat iron. So something I see at my gym, there's this black girl who works out and she'll wrap her hair like I wrap my hair at night. So brushing the hair into like a beehive around your head and then she puts a cap on, like a baseball cap on. So I, I saw her take it off in the change room and it looked amazing. It looked really, really amazing. But like she wasn't overly sweaty, so yeah. In the summer, I run a lot, I do a lot of cardio, and I sweat like a pig, and so I won't style my hair like this. It's just too much work to keep it straight. So yeah. Ah, Sade Champagne, I love her. She's my friend and uh, another one of the moderators of my hair care group. So she's asking, what has been your favorite part of your hair care journey so far, sis? Well, number one is meeting Sade. <laughs> But I have to say, and at the risk of sounding super corny, it was starting this YouTube channel because A, I learned so much about my relaxed hair that my relaxed hair started to thrive. I don't know if you guys remember what my hair looked like at the beginning of the year, but or even last year, but my hair has come such a long way. I'm so much happier with it. And this is all because I started this YouTube channel, did my research, did trial and error, invested in good quality hair care products and tools, and listen to my hair. You have to listen to your hair. If you add something new to your hair care routine, your hair will tell you that it doesn't like it. Secondly, meeting all of you. I've become friends with so many of you, and when I had my rough patch during the BLM movement, I was getting a lot of hate left, right, and center on all my social media platforms. You guys picked me up and dusted me off. That was the best part of this hair care journey. Thank you. So I think I'll have to do like a two part series to this because there are so many questions. I got about 400 questions and uh, I'm trying to answer the most asked questions. So I might have to do a second part to this video. Okay, so 50s Phillips is asking, I love doing braids on my, my relaxed hair. What can I use to maintain moisture? Oh, 50s Phillips, I'm not quite sure because I've never ever had braids other than like the cornrows and stuff my mom used to do on my hair as a kid. I've heard all sorts of different things like really taking care of your scalp, using spray moisturizers uh, on your braids, but other than that I am not quite sure. I'm so sorry. I do not have experience with that. Jessica Roa87 is asking, hey Dom, do you think it's possible to retain length without protective styles? Most certainly, I, I really do think you can. The traditional protective styles of, let's say, box braids, regular braids, weaves, wigs, clip-ins, blah, blah, blah. Um, a lot of those are really, really great for maintaining length, retaining length, so on and so forth. If you know how to take care of your hair using those things. Uh, the only protective style I use is a bun, and that really works for me. In the summer, I can get away with having my hair out a lot, but I, I don't chance that in the winter. But I wore my hair out a lot over the summer and my hair grew. It's a matter of keeping your hair tangle free and moisturizing your hair, sealing your hair, using great shampoos and conditioners and hydrating products, so on and so forth. Uh, there are some things that I stay away from, like you know, I'm not gonna wear my hair loose like this and drive a convertible. The wind whipping through your hair is gonna sap it from moisture and tangle it up. You know, I don't, I don't screw around with my hair a lot, like using a ton of different hair products or using hair waxes, you know, colored hair waxes for different hair color looks, so on and so forth. I think what's really helped me retain length with wearing my hair out like this is leaving it alone. Beatrice. Tutu is asking, what is sealing and how do you do it without making hair oily? So I use it when I wash and go only and I use the Lester's S Curl uh, Curl Activating Moisturizer and the oils that I've shown you here, but I like again, I throw my hair up into a bun when I do that. The best thing I've tried when it comes to moisturizing my hair when it's flat ironed like this is using serums. So I use uh, Purology Hydrate, I think it's called Hydrate Shine Max, or Paul Mitchell Skinny Serum, which is my favorite. And those serums, I just use like a little pump, even half a pump, pull it through my hair, 
and they do not weigh down my hair. They make my hair shiny and lovely. Yeah, I think that's your best bet for moisturizing flat ironed hair. So Olivia is asking, I'm a swimmer and I want to relax my hair. What are some tips to maintaining healthy hair if someone swims in a chlorine pool five to six days a week? Ouch. Box braids weighted down with water can get really heavy and pull on my edges and scalp and combined with a latex bathing cap, let's just say it hurts. Good God, girl. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I love to swim. I am a real mermaid at heart. Um, but I avoid chlorinated pools. And I've seen a movement, like my friends with pools, when I go to spas, when I go to resorts, I've seen a huge trend towards um, saltwater pools. They're so much better for your hair. Saltwater has its own issues, but chlorine is bleach. So it dries out hair. Uh, the only recommendation I can give you is to use a clarifying shampoo to strip away the chlorine from your hair. But even that, like, I wouldn't use, like, um, a clarifying shampoo five to six times a week. Like, it's so drying. There are swimmer shampoos out there, but personally, I feel that they're not geared towards our hair. I think they're really, really stripping. I don't know what to tell you, girl. Like, when I was taking swimming lessons as a kid and swimming in a chlorinated pool just once a week, my mom saw a real decline in the uh, quality of my hair. So I'm not quite sure what to do other than maybe coating your hair in, a, in an oil or a deep conditioner and then going swimming. But you know what? That's not even ideal for the pH of the pool. You might get yelled at by the lifeguard. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm useless. I'm being a useless uh, hair care guru. I'm sorry. But let me look into that because that's a really good question. I'm going to answer one more question then I'm going to have to do a part two, guys. Your questions have been great. Thank you so much. So Marilyn Martin is asking, I love, love, love Sharon's question and I can hardly wait for the answer. But my question is, do you ever use a detox or clarifying shampoo on wash day after all of the moisturizing and sealing all week? Hell yes. Hell yes. When I was using shea butter on my hair to moisturize, it worked really, really well, but it was so thick and gunky. I had no choice but to use my Paul Mitchell shampoo number two clarifying shampoo. I use a clarifying shampoo once every month, month and a half. It's like I've gotten new hair. It is so key to my hair care regime. It strips all of the gunk out and then it leaves my hair primed for a great deep condition and I notice without fail every time I use my Paul Mitchell clarifying shampoo and then deep condition my hair is light and bouncy and shiny and gorgeous. I absolutely adore it. My stylist Gloria put me on to that clarifying shampoo years and years ago and I am never without it. So yeah, I definitely have to use a clarifying shampoo because the moisturizing and sealing products can be so heavy and can really weigh down your hair. And it's key to use a clarifying shampoo because when those products build up in your hair, it's like it makes the product stop working because there's so much buildup on your hair. All of those healthy conditioners and oils and, and moisturizers cannot penetrate the hair shaft like they usually do. So yeah, buildup on your hair as well can cause it to break and can will make it dull and lifeless. And something else you'll notice is if you've got a lot of buildup in your hair, you can't do anything with your hair. You can't curl it. You can't do anything. It's just sort of a mess. So yeah, I love my clarifying products. Anyways, guys, please keep the questions coming. Feel free to leave some in the comments section. I will film a part two to this video because there are so many more questions to get through. Anyways, if you like this video, please give me the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Instagram. I'm at Dominique.Baker. I would love that. I'm also on Pinterest. I've been doing a few pinnable like infographics on hair care, so feel free to follow me on Pinterest. I have a blog too, StyleDomination.com. I would love it if you subscribed to it and uh, gave it a read. I love you guys. I am so glad to be back. I am so thrilled that you guys stuck with me. So... Wishing you all the merriest of Christmases, the happiest of holidays. I love you, love you, love you. And here's to a better 2021. Anyways, I love you guys. Bye.